Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and thanks for the opportunity to be able to, uh, to come to Sydney and to be able to present the, uh, the Azure story. It's been at least a couple of years since I've been here, and uh, I must say it is good to be back. So Azure Minerals, an Australian company focused back here in Australia now. We're um, a company that's been around for a while. We've got uh, two major shareholders, a, a German fund, which is in fact the same as Mike and Impact Minerals, uh, major shareholder, and also Mark Creasy, who is probably Australia's foremost uh, explorer and mine finder, and it's great to have him on the board as well. We've got a market cap of a bit over $100 million, $36 million in the bank, and, uh, and a very active uh, group of uh, explorers and uh, mine developers in, in the company. Two, probably just over a year ago, we were busy exploring in Mexico. We've got a couple of good projects over there, silver and gold projects, which were looking very promising. And then obviously COVID came along. We decided that we needed to return to our roots in Western Australia. Uh, so we pivoted back into WA and we were looking for projects. We approached Mark Creasy, who, as I said, has been a very successful mine finder in that state. And uh, Mark was very uh, willing to be able to part with some of the projects that he had in his portfolio. And so we've, we acquired interests in four projects in the Pilbara. Three of them are gold projects, which is Turner River, Coongan and Menthina. And the fourth project, and probably the most important one at this point in time, is Andover, which is a, a nickel, copper, cobalt, sulphide project located just uh, south uh, out, out of Caratha in the Pilbara region of Western Australia. So that is the name, number one focus for the company now. And Andover has been a, a cracking good uh, acquisition by Azure. You know, we did the deal in August of last year. We were on the ground doing geophysics in September. We had the first drill rig on the ground in October. We've got three drill rigs drilling there now. Um, in comparison to other places that we've worked, like Mexico, it's from a location point of view, it's fantastic, two and a half hours out of Perth. So it's the right project, right location, and right commodities. So we're talking nickel, copper and cobalt, which are three of the very important battery metals that we're going to be needing for our, uh, our electric future. Um, importantly, nickel, nickel, copper and cobalt are the three high value battery metals. So obviously lithium and, and manganese are also very important as well, but they are a bulk commodity, so you need a lot of it and it's a very large scale mining and processing style of operations. Nickel, copper, cobalt, sulphide dis dis deposits are very high value and, and therefore they bring a lot of uh, value quickly to the, uh, to the discoverers and developers of those projects. We've got, as I said, $36 million in the bank at the moment. We've got a great team in place, um, both mine finders, explorers, developers and people that have built and operated mines before. So the company is in a very strong position there. Now this beautiful piece of uh, wallpaper, what looks, what looks like wallpaper there, is the recently received uh, aeromagnetic survey that comes from, uh, that came over the Andover project. The project area is outlined in white. The, the Andover layered mafic ultra mafic complex is basically everything you can see there in purple, that's, or at least it is not orange. Um, and layered mafic, ultramafic intrusions have been the host of several major uh, discoveries, particularly recently in Western Australia. So, the uh, IGO mine, copper gold mine, sorry, nickel copper mine, which is Nova Bollinger, Legend Mining's Mawson discovery, Chalice Mine's Julemar discovery, where you're talking nickel, copper, cobalt, PGE style of mineralisation, are all hosted in similar sorts of rocks. What we've got here in the Andover complex is uh, similar styles of mineralisation and our tenement host contains about 70% or 70 square kilometres of the, uh, the complex itself. Um, there's many, many geophysical targets in this area. Most of the geophysical targets are identified by um, electromagnetic surveys, either airborne surveys or ground EM surveys. And we've identified quite a few of these electromagnetic conductors. We have drill tested multiples of these conductors, so six or eight of these conductor bodies have been tested in two different locations, located as uh, uh, VC7 and VC23, as shown on the plan there. Um, every conductor that we have drilled to date has contained nickel and copper sulphide mineralisation. So it, it is a drill one, hit one rate at the moment, 100% success rate. 
and there's multiple others of these uh, conductor styles elsewhere in the, t in the project area that have never been drilled to date. So no false positives, and the reason for that is, unlike a lot of other areas in Western Australia, there's no soil cover, the rocks stick out of the ground. There's no salt water, so there's no electrical conductivity from that aspect. There's no graphite or black shales or, or other sorts of sulphides in the area. It, what it seems that what we've got at the moment is that if you have an electromagnetic conductor in the Andover complex, more than likely it's going to be containing or associated with nickel and copper sulphide mineralisation. So if we zoom in now on the, uh, the VC7 discovery, it is turning out to be quite a substantial nickel copper sulphide body of mineralisation. It's over a kilometre long and from surface to depths of at least 400 metres it's been identified to date. We started drilling in October of last year with a single drill rig. We've now got three drill rigs going drilling full time. We've completed 27 holes for 12, 13,000 metres to date. We have received assays back for uh, the first 16 of those 27 holes and if you take what we've released to date in those 16 holes with assays, what it identifies is that we have an overall zone of mineralisation, an envelope of nickel and copper sulphide mineralisation, which varies between 15 to 20 or more metres wide, grading around 1.2 to 1.5 per cent nickel. And within each of those overall on mineralised envelopes, you have a narrower, much higher grade zone of mineralisation in each of those holes, which is around about six to eight metres wide, grading between around 2.3 to 2.5 per cent nickel. And we're seeing that in all of the holes that we've drilled to date. And this is the sort of mineralisation that we're hitting. Three photographs, three different holes there, and you're looking at in uh, good high grade styles of mineralisation. So you have massive nickel sulphides or semi-massive or matrix or heavily disseminated types of uh, sulphide mineralisation. And you can see on that with the grades, 2.6% nickel, 3 4% up there. So you've got a significant uh, nickel grades within those high grade or massive sulphide zones. And what we have here is showing is we've got two different sorts of sections. One of them is a, a cross section and the other one is a long section. So the cross section is looking towards the, uh, the west and uh, the long section is looking towards the north. And what, it, what these demonstrate is that we have mineralisation that starts at or very close to surface. In fact, we do have oxidised or weathered nickel mineralisation actually at surface. You can see it there, you can crack the rocks, you can see the, the, the weathered and oxidised nickel and copper mineralisation there. But the sulphide mineralisation, it starts at around about 5 to 10 metres below surface. So in effect, you, come, it, you can say it does come very close to surface. And it continues to depths of at least 400 metres and it remains open. There's, potent, there's two, potentially three bodies of mineralisation that we've seen to date. Um, they're open in all directions, so we have a very one very close to surface here, which is open off to the right-hand side of the screen, up here, which is open off to the left-hand side of the screen, and then the major body of mineralisation that we're currently drilling is open in all directions, and particularly open, strongly open at depth, and that's demonstrated by the downhole electromagnetic surveys we, we, we're doing. These geophysical surveys are looking for uh, bodies of sulphide mineralisation that are electrically conductive and quite clearly shows is that we have this what we call a conductor plate here in blue clearly demonstrated by the drill holes the surveys we've done in these drill holes that this mineralisation does continue at depth and if we look on the long on the cross section side of things there's really good continuity down dip and once again the uh, the downhole surveys in these deeper holes quite clearly shows the mineralisation continues at depth. So we've got potential here for both a long strike in an east-west direction and we also have the potential to extend the mineralisation to significant depths. And uh, what we're looking at here is a, a style of mineralisation which is a remobilised sulphide. So these sulphides have remobilised in from somewhere else, probably at depth. And we'll keep tracking it both a long strike in an east-west direction, also down at depth to find where the original source of this will be. But even so, what we're hitting at the moment is, uh, is incredibly promising. And uh, where to from here? Well, we've got three drill rigs drilling on the, uh, on the nickel sulphides at VC7 at the moment. So all of the, the focus is very much into this area. 
We've also completed a short reconnaissance program, initially two holes, it turned out to be eight diamond holes into VC23, where the conductors were there, and we also hit, we hit nickel and copper sulphide mineralisation in, in every hole, and five of the eight holes had very significant mineralisation. So we're doing more geophysics into this area at the moment. So we've got these are uh, obviously very uh, promising, but where else we've got? Well, we've got two other areas further to the north, VC18 and 41, where we've got very strong bedrock hosted uh, EM conductors in these places here, which have never yet been drilled. And yet the, the geophysics is indicating that there is a body of some form of uh, conductance at depth. And in addition to that, then we have another three where we know a little less about them, but we still have some very strong conductor bodies at depth. So we have, what we've got here is uh, strong electromagnetic conductors, Two areas, VC7 and VC23, we've drilled and confirmed that those conductors host nickel. We've got a number of other targets where we've yet to drill. Whether they also contain nickel or not is yet to be seen. But as I said earlier, I mean, at the moment we've we're, uh, got a 100% success rate. Drill a conductor and hit sulphides, nickel sulphides. One of the great parts of working in this part of Western Australia is, is just its location. You know, you're flying basically from Perth into Caratha, which is two hours, you're half an hour drive along the, the Northwest Coastal Highway and you're on site. All of the infrastructure you could possibly need for an exploration or mining industry or mining operation at Andover is within one hour's drive of the project or less than one hour's drive. So we've got all the access in there that we need. We've got power commercial power, we've got water supplies, we've got cell phone coverage throughout the area. Everything you could possibly want in terms of services and support um, support apparatus is right there in Caratha or in Roeburn. So you don't get better areas to operate in than, than where Andover is. So from now on, it's just it's flat out for the rest of this year. We're well cashed up, $36 million sitting in the bank at the moment. The resource drill program's 30,000 or possibly more metres there. It's being guided by the downhole EM surveys that we're doing, whereby you do drill the hole, you do the downhole EM survey, the geophysical can vector you into where the, the, the sulphide mineralisation is going so you can plan the next hole going forward. And the intent is that we will have a mineral resource completed before the end of this year. And exploration drilling on the other conductor targets that we've got there is a high priority as well, and that's, so that's full on. But we're, we're actually quite confident or very confident about this, about this project. In fact, to the extent where we've employed an engineer and he has com commenced the, the development studies. So we've got metallurgical test work underway, mining, geotechnical studies, heritage, environment, local community, everything is being worked on at the moment with the intention of having the first stage of our development study program completed uh, potentially within 12 months from now. So Andover is, is full on and, and just f full steam ahead. As I mentioned at the beginning, we also have a couple of gold projects, um, but neither of these gold projects are granted at the moment. We're still waiting for the Department of Mines to grant the tenements. We've got uh, the Turner River project, which is 450 square kilometres of land, located very close to De Grey Mining's Hemi Gold Discovery and, and their Malina Gold project, where they've got over 2 million ounces of gold in, throughout the project area, and, and Hemi, well, who knows how big that's going to be, but it looks to be uh, going to be very, very significant gold deposit in its own right. The controls of the gold mineralisation at Hemi are along a series of shear zones. One of those shear zones runs up through our ground for over 12 kilometres. Our ground has never been drilled. As soon as the tenements are granted, we'll be out there uh, drilling on there and looking for extensions of the, uh, of the Hemi and Malina gold project. And the other project we've got is Barton. It's located further south in Western Australia, just to the north of Kalgoorlie. It's in an area where there is a significant amount of gold, both historically being mined and also in current resources. Uh, there, there's a lot of gold mining and exploration activity happening in the Kukaini district. Um, one of the companies that's operational there is, is uh, Genesis Minerals with their Ulysses project, which has got uh, about a bit over one and a quarter million ounces of gold and resources. You've got the Saturn Minerals Apollo Hill, which is just under a million ounces of gold resources. And then companies like Metallicity and some others are drilling around the Kukaini South District and have been having some cracking good high grade uh, drill hits recently. So our project is 200 square kilometres. It sits right in the middle 
It's never been drilled except for one small area in the bottom left hand corner, which is called Daisy's Corner, where back in 20 something years ago, um, some drill holes did hit some reasonably interesting and anomalous gold mineralisation. Since then, never been followed up. It's sitting under cover between five and 20 metres thick soil cover. Um, so when we, as soon as this tenement is granted, we'll be on the ground with the drill rig, systematically drilling out the bedrock, looking to, uh, to capitalise on the exploration success our neighbours have had because they've been drilling right up to very close to our tenement boundary. And from our point of view, we can then put the drill rig on our side of that boundary and continue drilling. So a lot of activity happening. Um, I guess from the, the point of view of the company overall, the focus is very much on the nickel and copper sulphide discovery at Andover. The company is very strongly cashed up with a good team in place. The resource drill out will happen throughout this year with the resource, but hopefully by the end of this year. With three rigs going, you know, we are drilling basically, as it says, three holes every two weeks are coming out. So we have a good cash flow, uh, sorry, a good news flow of mineralizer of uh, news flow of news that is coming out. Um, and so far, all of that's indicating good, strong mineralization in the district. Exploration can, will continue as well. So that's, that's just continuing on. We'll be doing some more drilling that later in the year. The development studies are, are progressing really well and uh, everything we're seeing so far is coming up positive. We haven't seen any speed bumps or roadblocks to date. We've got gold exploration in the second half of this year. And in the meantime, our uh, Mexican assets are uh, undergoing a divestment strategy uh, or a divestment uh, program at the moment so that we can sell those assets and, and continue to focus 100% onto our Australian projects. So that's the Azure story and the Andover story, and uh, thank you very much for your time.